Hey guys, it's me, Dax Moy from fitnessmarketingmadesimple.com. Um, just a very, very quick one to let you know how much of a, an idiot I've been, um, and also to help you cash in on my idiocy. Um, as you know, I'm running the uh, how to how to sell high end personal training to the ultra affluent program in early December, and. Given that I was on a course this weekend, I thought I'd set everything up on the sales page to automatically switch across and pop the pop the new kind of prices in and everything else. Clearly, I haven't because I haven't set up that kind of a page. So I don't know I don't know what was going on in my mind. I was supposed to have manually changed the buttons, and I didn't. And the first thing I knew about it was just about 20 minutes ago, where I'd made a couple of a uh, couple of sales for people coming onto onto the event, and the the receipts that I got were completely the wrong price. So instead of chasing up those gentlemen, which would have been really really unfair, I've decided to essentially extend the early bird until 10 p.m. UK time tonight. So that's uh, UK is uh, Eastern plus five. Um, and re I mean, really, it's, it's quite simple. That's going to be the time that I'm going to bed. Okay, so that literally by the time I go to bed, the price will have gone up. So look, I'm not here to do any form of hard sell for you about this event. Um, there's not going to be a million bullet points. You're not going to get a gazillion bonuses if you sign up now. In fact, there are no bonuses for the event whatsoever. Uh, to be honest, I don't really believe in bonuses. If, if, if an event is great, why should you get loads of bonuses for the event? I just don't believe in that. To be honest, that's also something something that we'll be talking about with the with the very small select group of people that actually come onto this fitness marketing with the affluent. You see, a lot of the stuff that we've been taught about how to attract our clients in the fitness industry is completely arse about face for attracting high end clientele. Okay, and I just want to be clear about something here, right? Be, you know, if if people kind of maybe even thinking of coming on this event. Uh, think about it from the perspective of let me go and fleece some suckers and, and get and get some easy money. Think again. Um, the affluent market are not suckers at all. Um, they don't have more money than cents. And if you if you generally tend to think that they do, you're not going to resonate with them, and they're not going to resonate with you. you. Quite simply, won't attract them onto your client base. Um, you know, here's here's one example: uh, a V2 phone, eight and a half grand to buy one. You know, it's very easy to say, oh, they must have more money in the sense. Well, if you're on a million, a couple of million, 10 million, 100 million dollars a year, pounds a year, whatever it is, and you're spending that kind of money on the phone, you're spending a tiny percentage of your income on that eight and a half grand phone compared to somebody else spending uh, five, six hundred pounds on a, on an iPhone, for example, right? So it's it's all about, you know, kind of, it's all relative. It's all relative to what the person's earning. and But it also kind of gives you an indication of the mindset of a high, of the of the affluent, of the, of the, of the high end affluent. They're not looking for the also run. They're not looking for the stuff that's the same as everybody else can get. In fact, you could almost say that the the affluent are almost like a microcosm of what we've already been taught about niching. Okay, so we're taught about you know the the generic idea of, of you know you can sell fitness or personal training, and then you could be a fat loss specialist, and then within that you could work with, work with people with hormones or whatever it is. And as you work in and in and in, each level of that working in brings you to a different level of clientele and who are willing to pay more for the service. Well, if we're talking about working with, with the ultra high end, which I'm, I've been very, very fortunate enough to work with over the years, um, those, those guys are, you know, they're on the, on the razor's edge of a niche, on the razor's edge of a niche. And that razor's edge of a niche is, is waiting for people like yourselves to come along and make the most of it. And when I say make the most of it, I don't mean to exploit it, right? If again, if your idea is to just exploit some easy money, this is this is not going to be the program for you, and this is not the niche for you. In fact, you will be expelled from that niche faster faster than you could ever believe. It'll only take one high end client to spread the word that you're not as good as you say you are, and that you didn't come up to scratch, and you will just never ever work in those circles again. Okay, so here's what it here's what it comes down to. They want the very best. They want the very best isn't about just about your training and knowledge of biomechanics and hormones. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in the background in the in the in the psyche of the of the high end affluent, and there's something that they want that nobody else is giving them. 
Okay, and once you, once you can figure that out, and I've been very very fortunate enough to to understand uh, understand a lot of this because I've actually seen it firsthand. Once you understand it, once you know what it is, then you can use that to generate some real major change in their lives. Now, this is important for several reasons because. Obviously, as coaches, we want to we want to help everyone anyway. But some of the high end affluent that I've worked with, uh, you know, they've they've gone on to, for example, gone on to influence their husbands or their partners who are lead, leaders of kind of worldwide corporations or or you know interior ministers of of, of countries. So the kind of decisions about nations get changed as a result of off the back of the kind of work that I do. Now, if that that may be intimidating, you you know, you think, oh God, that's not what I'm in this for. I'm, I just want to do some exercise. Well, that's that's fine, but just understand there is a that doesn't have to be your intent. I just I just want you to understand that you're when you're working at this kind of level the the interventions that you're making is more than eat a bit less and move a bit more it's more than you know cut back any carbs and do a bit of this there's a whole element that the high end affluent are looking for i mean really really desirous of that if you deliver it to them they will they will absolutely love you forever okay they don't need a somebody to beast them around around the park or they don't need somebody to kind of tell them one more rep and, and carry their water bottle across the gym for them and wipe their brow and all that kind of cliche um, cliche high-end stuff, right? That's not what, in my experience, that's not been the kind of clients that I've ever attracted to to my business and they've not been the kind of, kind of, you know, kind of clients I would ever want to work with, right? There's, this is a very, very specific niche. So look, in this, in this couple of days in December, I'm going to be taking you through exactly what it is that attracts and repels the, the high-end affluent, what it is that you need to, need to do um, with your websites and your marketing material, etc., etc. And it's not what you think. Every single thing that you think you need to do with your website comparative to what others, you know, what your normal website is doing or what, what other marketing experts have told you, it's not what you need to do. In fact, my high-end website does very well, but it's a bit aged now. I'm just about to change it again, right? But even as it is right now, it's a fair bit different to other people's. Um, there's not going to be any any testimonials on your sites, and there aren't going to be very many comments from people. Um, there definitely won't be any before and afters. These are high end affluent, unless you happen to be training a film star for a role that has a physical component to it, and interviewing you about how they got into that shape is beneficial to the client. You will mostly be the, you know, you you won't be you won't be kind of in the limelight as being a, a celebrity coach. So so this high end affluent thing, this moves beyond being a celebrity coach, right? Celebrity coach is hanging off the pigtails essentially of the names of the celebrities that they're working with. Right? But does that make sense to you? I mean, just because let's for argument's sake say I happen to work with Brad Pitt and I haven't, right? But I'm just picking him out of the blue because I don't want to name my clients. So let's say I've worked with Brad Pitt. And you say, wow, Dax Moy is brilliant because he worked with Brad Pitt. Am I? Am I really? Does the fact that I work with somebody who's an actor, actor who's already in fairly decent shape, um, a stunning shape by most people's standards, um, does that make me a great coach? I don't think so, right? You just... That's not something not something that I believe in. I don't believe that just because you train celebs, you're, celebs, you're great. The truth is that many celebs are already looking after themselves very, very well before they ever become the clients of, of the coaches, right? That's not to knock anybody who's working in the celeb field, by the way, right? But the, what I'm saying here is that this is very, very different. What I'm talking to you about is essentially being somebody, somebody a mo their most trusted advisor, being in the shadows, helping them get the kind of results, not just physically, but emotionally and kind of in terms of their relationships and everything, working in a very, very, very different way to the way most of the fitness industry are working, okay? So look. This is you know, this is going to be a great event. I'm I'm bringing in um, my secret weapon. I'm bringing in uh, a couple of uh, my PR agents, and they're going to give a bit of a presentation there as well. Not very long. It's going to be me doing nearly all the talking. Um, but for about an hour, ninety minutes of that weekend, we're going to have my my PR agents come in, and they're going to talk about exactly what it is that you need to do to get yourself in front of publications in general but high-end publications specifically again what things are going to repel what things are going to attract the journalists how to how to kind of kind of create your stories so that 
the journalists themselves are turned on by your story. Remember, you know, if you want to get in front of the in front of the ultra affluent, a big part of that is getting in front of in front of the publications that access the affluent. It's much far faster than you doing all the legwork yourself. But there's a lot more to it than that as well, right? Otherwise, we all just go and take out a big, you know, two-page ad in Vogue or something, and the next day our phones will be ringing. It doesn't work that way. So the you know my pr my pr team will be be coming as well they'll put on a little talk for you we've got you know we've got we've got some really good stuff going on that weekend but rather than it just being an actual presentation you know it's not just a seminar that you're going to sit there at it's going to be quite a small group i would say we're probably only going for about 15 to 20 people right we've already got the first 12 so you know i'm 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 not looking to kind of sell this out into a massive massive event what's more interesting for me is to be able to turn this into more of a workshop kind of event so that before you even leave on Sunday, you've created a lot of your marketing materials, or at least you've created the concept for them. Okay, so you're not going to leave, leave with reams and notes and say, oh God, what do I do now? I'm going to actually help you live during the event to make yourself more attractive to the affluent. Okay, so look. I'm starting to feel like I'm doing a whole salesy, salesy bit now, which is, um, I mean, obviously I'm trying, I'm trying to sell the event, but I don't want it. I don't want to kind of waffle on too much. You either want to come to it or you don't. Um, it's either something that really attracts you, really turns you on, or it doesn't. If you want to come, like I said, I'm extending the early bird deadline, which uh, Muppet that I am, I should have, I should have shut down on Friday night and only just realised that that I haven't. I think it was Friday night or was it Saturday? But I, I, I should have shut it down ultimately. I, I haven't. I'm going to run. It's it's uh, 6 p.m. here in the UK now, which means that in four hours' time, I'm shutting it down and turning it back to the full price or, or to the next level of the next level of the of the pricing structure. There's, there are several components to it, as you'll see. But look, if you want to come, um, if you're fairly certain that you want to come, sign up for it and save yourself the money. Um, if you're not sure that you want to come, then don't. <laughs> um, you know, I, it's, again, this is a big part of working working with affluent. It, the, the old hard sell thing doesn't work. You don't need to sell people. You either really want to be at this event. The affluent are someone that you really want to access. Not hopefully, please, 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 not just for their money, not just for their cash, but you want to access. You know, I mean, if if we're talking about gaining security for yourself and all the rest of it, that's absolutely fine. But, but I'm not looking to train anybody in how to fleece the affluent. Um, but if, if this is something you want to come to, then please you know, get a wriggle on, press that button before 10 p.m. Otherwise, you, you lose. And remember, if you're in the States, we are uh, Eastern plus 5. So it'll be, it'll be 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Eastern time when I, I'll be sh shutting this down. Okay, so that's it from me. Um, sorry for the, you know, Sorry for the, I guess, the bit of a pitch here. Um, I'm trying to keep fitness marketing made simple, pitch free, but I'm also um, very much aware that some of these things are time sensitive, and if I don't tell you, then you're going to end up paying more than you have to, and I don't want you to do that either. So thanks very much for listening to another weird Dax Moy rambling. Um, thanks for uh, if you if you do sign up. Thanks for t thanks for taking advantage of me being an absolute muppet, and I will speak to you again really really soon on the community. Take care, guys.